all of you attending the forum. I would like to extend a special greeting on behalf of Ecuador, on behalf of our homeland, on behalf of Quito, to the capital, and the National Assembly to Mr. Nakasone, who is attending, representing Mr. Nakasone, who is the honorary president of the APPF. This is uh, Valentina Bianginko, chair of the council of the Federation of the National Assembly of the Federation of Russia. Mrs. Brown Bishop, President of the Chamber of uh, Representatives of Australia. Mr. Harushan, President of the Senate of uh, Malaysia. Our colleagues, Rosana Alvarado and uh, Mrs. Akenega, who are the Deputy Presidents of our National Assembly. Mr. Said of the Chamber of Representatives. Representatives of Malaysia, Mrs. Dodi Sofri Brody, Vice President of the Senate of Malaysia, Mr. Sambaun, Vice President of the National Assembly of the People's Republic of China, Mr. Fatli Ison, Vice President of the Chamber of Representatives of the Republic of Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, heads of delegation of Cambodia, Canada, Chile, Republic of Korea, Japan, Mexico, Federation of the States of Micronesia, New Zealand, Singapore, and Vietnam. And to our colleagues, uh, assembly persons uh, of the Republic of Ecuador, members of the delegations participating in this 23rd annual Asia Pacific Parliamentary Forum, Mr. Prefect of the Province of Pichincha, Gustavo Barroja. Greetings to all of you. Uh, I haven't, you have been convened to this very important forum, which is for parliamentarians uh, representing your people. The stage that brings uh, regional diversity with uh, culture and government practices and social practices that are quite diverse. We have met here in this warm and generous land, Ecuador, where we have a large delegation from uh, Parliament, uh, which represented more than 60% of the world population. I would like uh, this to serve to draw up new agreements in the framework of a multipolar world. From this perspective, our peoples build a common future that enable us to have a new horizon to understand ourselves and to have plural communication. Coming here together in the Pacific Rim in, in a multicultural space enriched by universal history, we tackle on the basis of this wealth and this uh, ability to respond to challenges that are in a world that is increasingly complex and interdependent. As a host, aware of the responsibility that we have to fulfill, we reaffirm the commitment to ensure continuity to dialogue, to ensure our ambitions as a strategic forum to consolidate the region Asia-Pacific that is nourished by an ocean that does not separate us. This ocean actually brings us together to diminish the asymmetries and imbalances through collective efforts to find solutions that are shared to respond on two common problems. On 22 occasions, we have met as delegates of the member countries of the APPF, defining global contents motivated by issues of interest of our national agendas. Never before, these decisions taken by the states are able to determine not only the future of our societies and their economies, but also the conditions that guarantee the survival of the human race and life in general on the planet. Never before have we been so aware of being part of nature and of the need to overcome a, an anthropocentric vision that would condemn us to cross the border to unreasonableness without return. And this region experiences converge to build a multicultural states and societies that are enriched by pluralism to project themselves and consolidate themselves. Ecuador has 
contributed uh, to this, recognizing itself as a plural state, uh, and that uh, contributes to uh, an open sensitivity and to singularities as well to, to cultivate a common world. The citizen revolution was installed in Ecuador on the 15th of January 2007 with the objective to achieve uh, the refoundation of the Ecuadorian state and to consolidate the social project that is aimed at building socialism of the good way of living. Our political project gives priority to the human being above capital, above money. In, in these past eight years, the citizen revolution has built a process of radical change to create a socialism of the good way of living, the Summa Causa, using the principles of universality, equality, equity, progress, progress, interculturalism, solidarity, and non-discrimination. In addition to this, it promotes freedom based on justice, democracy, peace, and uh, equitable relationships aimed at ensuring the common good. One of one, the unprecedented acts has approved a new constitution. The constitution of Monte Cristi, ratified in 2008, marked by the recognition of nature as a subject of right, socialism of the good way of living, and the conviction that throughout this administration, with the actions of the citizen revolution, led by the president of the Republic, Rafael del Correa, this is sustained on restoring the human being as the center, as the hub of uh, politics and the state and the economy, and to ensure the redistribution of wealth uh, with an equitable and uh, fair focus. Happiness is a value that are accessible to transform the country integrally without losing the horizon of the human being. The National Plan of the Good Way of Living is a roadmap. It uh, points to a series of objectives that express the will to continue transforming historically what is being lived in Ecuador. Its objectives are aimed at consolidating a democratic state and to build uh, people's power, promoting equality, cohesiveness, inclusion, and social and territorial equity in the diversity, improve the quality of living of the population, build up the capacities and potential of our citizens, building forums for coming together and fortifying the national identities that we have. At the same time, our diverse identities lead to interculturalism. As well, we try to consolidate the transformation of justice, consolidating integral security, respecting strictly the human rights, uh, guaranteeing the rights of nature, and promoting sustainability in our territory, not only locally, but also globally, developing an economic and social system that is based on solidarity, uh, ensuring a decent work in all of its forms, uh, and to ensure a transformation of the output model in order to ensure the sovereignty and the efficiency of the strategic sectors in order to ensure the technological and industrial transformation of our country. Sovereignty and peace constitute a strategic uh, objectives to insert our country in the world and also to ensure Latin American integration. One of the policies that is the backbone of the good way of living and that involves the entire state of Ecuador is is based on the change of the output model in order to generate a dynamic economy aimed at knowledge and innovation that is sustainable, diversified, and inclusive. Obtaining these goals requires us to improve the value of what we produce, ensure productivity, and ensure quality to be included in our economy, diversifying uh, production markets and exports, uh, substituting progressively and strategically the imports. 
in short, what we try to do is to generate uh, signals and incentives to promote the commitment of the private sector, stimulating human talent and uh, knowledge the, and the culture in order to structurally change our output model. With respect to the Security Council of the UN, we believe this there's a problem with the Security Council of the UN. It needs to be a broader, more broadly representative. Ecuador would like to promote a reform of the UN agencies aimed at democratizing the Security Council of the UN so that it can be uh, represented by blocks, uh, making sure that all of the members of the UN can feel that they are duly represented in the reform. in order to make sure that the process of decision-making is transparent by the members of the Security Council of the United Nations. In its uh, foreign affairs, Ecuador puts emphasis on the building, confidence building, in order to consolidate peace, cooperation, and good neighborhood. In this spirit, we give priority to the participation in regional forums and multilateral forums as well, and we defend the principles enshrined in the UN Charter, as well as a compliance with international law as a norm for the conduct of states. We would like to restore in your memory what was proposed in the last forum in Mexico to give the leadership to what has been resolved, giving priority to giving encouragement and incentives to the world economy based on the protection of the environment, a protection that is balanced and harmonious, reanimating our confidence to give a value to equity as an ethical principle of humanity. This forum of dialogue dialogue and consensus urges peace, sovereignty, and territorial integrity. Let us mention uh, some of the resolutions of the forum. In this last, uh, in the last forum, we emphasize the importance of the need to ensure greater stability and greater security in the Asia-Pacific region. And we can also say from a perspective in, of integ integral security, we have to humanize the peaceful settlement of disputes as a deterrent practice and to reject confrontation and clashes against the third parties and third countries. We must share the insistence made to all of the countries of the region that consists of reinforcing continuously the multi Lateral system of parliamentary diplomacy in order to ensure peace and Asia and stability in the Asia Pacific region. I would like to add that our action in our parliaments should focus on prevailing the prevalence of diplomatic channels to ensure a new culture of dialogue. In the resolution, we have to emphasize the search for cultural exchanges with uh, contacts from from one people to another, with greater cooperation to raise other conditions of living, incorporating respect, mutual respect, tolerance, and solidarity. We adhere to the sustained efforts in the resolution that proposals support for democratic institutions that are solid, Gov good governance that is responsible and groups of civil society in the Asia-Pacific region. I would also like to add that on the basis of uh, our Ecuadorian state experience, we need to promote a democracy that is truly participatory, where citizens are actively involved in the decision-making of a government. 
becoming the owners of their own destiny. With respect to the resolutions, with respect to the economic efforts, we believe that it is important to promote and to consolidate integration between our states, promoting the establishment of horizontal ties between regional associations and regional and multilateral associations. The resolutions that has to do with uh, companies and regional investments and that uh, promotes the Asia-Pacific uh, Forum to come up with common strategies to mitigate the negative impact uh, on our society. This is a matter that has to be discussed uh, rigorously with respect. Uh, we would like to call all of the countries, members of the forum, to promote an initiative uh, to have uh, that provides uh, norms and regulations uh, with respect to corporate responsibility with respect to human rights. I would like to remind you that it was already supported by several countries of our Asia-Pacific region by means of resolution of the Council of Human Rights of the United Nations on the 25th of June uh, 2014 with the creation of a working group to draft an international instrument that is legally binding with respect to corporate social responsibility and with respect to human rights, uh, Ecuador conscience of the asymmetries between the states and the large transnational corporations signed the initiative of establishing the observatory of the South with respect to transnational companies that uh, is aimed at becoming a forum to think about the national experiences with these corporations and to have a technical and academic support to focus on investments to make sure that this investment by transnational companies focuses on the development of our peoples. I would like you to participate in this initiative and I believe that it would lead to greater consolidation of our regional integration and our sovereign interests. We believe that another issue of the resolutions that must be emphasized is the one that refers to the prevention of risks with respect to the disasters and to the building of resilient societies. In Ecuador, the treatment of uh, risk management is a major subject of security, and it is highly important for us that has been manifested in the formation of the decentralized risk management system aimed at identifying, preventing, and mitigating risks of natural disasters, social, cultural disasters, uh, generating policy, policy strategies and regulations that promote the capacities of our institutions. The spirit behind this uh, and that drives our parliament uh, is to organize the basis uh, to, to generate wealth. In the wealth, uh, in the past, this wealth was uh, focused uh, based on a extractive uh, resources. Right now, we propose as a new model uh, an inclusive, decentralized, and deconcentrated model for the economy and that gambles on an economy based on knowledge and capacities of our, our Ecuadorian uh, citizens. Here, and cooperation that we need for this goes on much uh, further than simply uh, trade. We have to overcome asymmetries and we have to leave behind the stigmas in production change and the marketing of commodities in the global market. It requires for us to have a new type of exchange based on science, based on technology as well. Ecuador highlights one of the objectives of our development is the adoption of technologies where not only are we confined to consuming these technologies but also producing technologies, improving them, creating them and share them as a nation to reach this goal. We call upon the right to have an equitable exchange of ties and free 
open knowledge. Uh, the generation of knowledge is one of the major inputs uh, for the progress of our planet. A more just world, a more equitable world, uh, not only internationally but also nationally, requires uh, the democratization of knowledge, uh, technological sovereignty, and access to objective information. In this commitment, Ecuador has defended these freedoms, guaranteeing the international protection to those who have fought for them. A more just world is also a world that is a safer world. In our, according to us, what is economic, what is financial, and what is commercial are part of a fabric that is consolidated and with security. That is why there is no security policy that can be effective that is not sustained by equitable development, economic development, and social development. The Ecuadorian state promotes security policies under the principle of protection for human beings, respecting human welfare and promoting the rights of peoples and their freedom with an integral conception and a multi-dimensional conception. We are prepared to tackle any threat with our own means without requiring international cooperation in this sector or will not be able to undermine our sovereignty. Over the past eight years, the state of Ecuador has promoted the concept of human mobility, consolidating a regulatory framework that makes it possible to consolidate uh, mechanisms to, to ensure the human rights of Ecuadorians, not only within their own country, but also abroad, as well as uh, the rights of um, foreigners who live in our country, in, in line with the principles of non-discrimination and universal citizenship, uh, with the right to migrate and not to be qualified as illegal under any concept, uh, because uh, they have simply migrated. Dear friends, dear colleagues, uh, the denouncement uh, in the world that uh, took place in France on the 7th of January, the uh, breaking in of the French newspaper Charlie Hebdo and the death of 12 persons and other four victims who are in severe conditions uh, must be condemned by all of us. This war must require that there there must be an investigation of this tragedy based on objective uh, matter and to examine all of the hypotheses and to go far away from any type of fragmentation within society in order to avoid possible imbalances and threats to peace in the world. Dear members of parliament, participants in this 23rd Asia Pacific uh, Parliamentary Forum. To conclude, I would like to highlight that uh, politics and security are an aspect uh, that will be dealt with today. And I do not want to conclude without uh, formulating a call to all of you so that those who are executing these policies uh, do defend life in all of its forms. Uh, as an essential concern where we decide our own destiny and the destiny of humankind as well. Friends, the ocean that brings us together in all of its depth and width has a name that we have to honor with the commitment to ensure peace for development and for the well-being of our peoples in our region, the Pacific Ocean a peaceful ocean. And thank you very much. I hope that my few words help you in your endeavors and discussions today and in your thoughts and reflections to ensure closer ties amongst our countries of the Asian